very interesting case. These cases which we face on weekly basis is quite round, white tip, large nostril, asymmetrical nostrils, very wide, round tip, as you see, under projected tip, short columella, hump, deep nasofrontal angle, and you see how we will do the nose reshaping for this case. Thank you for watching. Just before I, I start, I would like to do some demonstration. If we, this is the uh, lower lateral cartilage, as you see, lower cartilage is actually three portions. The medial cura, the medial cura, the intermediate cura, and the lateral cross, lateral cross. So therefore, what are we going, I mean, to do? What is the principle of our uh, technique? The principle is to work mainly in the midline or in the intermediate core. So you need to identify the junction between the intermediate core and the lateral cross. This junction there need to be identified. It's called the tip defining point. This is the tip defining point, the junction between the intermediate and the lateral cross. Therefore, once you identify this tip defining point there, which means that we fully preserve the lateral cross. So there will be no marginal incision, no exposure, and don't borrow and don't steal any part of the lateral cross. We might trim a little portion of the lateral cross during the which is acceptable. Only one, one millimeter, maximum one millimeter we might trim, but not more than one millimeter trimming or maybe sometime 1.5, but not you need to leave at least at least five to seven millimeter of the uh, uh, vertical lateral cross intact when you do your, your excision. But the main need to preserve the lateral cross for you don't borrow and don't, don't steal any portion of the lateral cross. Reserve this in full, and this is going to support the alar side wall there, to going to support the alar side wall and prevent any, any collapse or asymmetry, notching, benching, and even deviation. So this is a tip defining point. This is what's called this one to this one, the tip defining point, the junction between intermediate and lateral cross, that's it there. It's the highest point of the tip. Uh, it's correspond to this point there, as you see, correspond to this point there, the tip defining point. So this is a lateral cross. This is a lateral cross now, as you see, and this is the intermediate cross there and the medial cross there and this is the intermediate cross this is the intermediate cross in this area so my main work is going to be in the intermediate cross area only in this area and even that cross alone no margin incision no exposure no delivery don't borrow and don't steal any portion of that cross so i'm going to mark now the tip defining point internally so it's quite obvious there this is the junction between the intermediate and lateral cross the third cross is kept intact, as you see, no margin, no exposure. Again, on this side, this is, this is the junction between the intermediate cross and the lateral cross left alone. So the first now step of the procedure is to obtain the septal graft, and we go about one millimeter behind the caudal septum. That's in order to, I want to do tip, uh, in a groove technique most likely in this case. So I'm not go so far backward, only one millimeter behind the code So I'm now on the right plane, as you see. Once I'm on the right plane, the, my, my sector will run very quickly and very swiftly backward, upward, downward. In one second, I already elevated the left pericondary flap, as you see from inside, because I'm exactly on the right plane. I go about one centimeter behind and inside the cartilage and get access to the right pericondial flap now. Again, try to go to the right plane. I am on the right plane. Again, on the right plane, as you see now, in one second, all being dissected away, and the cartilage now in the middle, as you see nicely in the middle, because I'm mainly on the right plane. Then 1.5 centimeter below the dorsum septum, make my cut there and obtain the, see, I preserved about 1.5 centimeter of dorsum septum, 1.5 centimeter of the quadra septum, I do my, with Valenja knife, and get a graft used for columnar strut, for tibial graft, maybe also a nasal graft. 
remove the sharp edge from there, and as you see, a very intact, very intact um, uh, flab, and a very, very nice and intact flab in both sides. Now, next step is to do the intercart incision, which is the junction between skin and the mucosa. It's a midline, only one centimeter away from the midline. So keep all the lateral intact, keep all the lateral section. All the lateral intact, don't extend your incision laterally, only stay in the midline. Again, only one centimeter away from the midline. And keep all the lateral intact. Then with your sharp scissors, go in between. And you see what I am? Exactly where I want to be, is the midline. Okay. Again on this. Again, I'm on the midline. Okay, mainly on the midline. And we just undermine the dorsum. Don't make large buckets. Keep your hand close to the cartilage and bone and make, keep staying in a tight place. Just in case if you want to put any, any graph later on, so the graph will not swim, will not float. Okay. Okay, now next step is to reduce slightly the subalar firmness by removing portion of the lateral cuts and the curvature of the lateral cartilage. So we did our incision, so we get the mucosa away and inside the small portion, which is coming from there. This will reduce the firmness slightly. Again, do the same on the other side. You see now. And this is motion of the lateral cast and the curvature, the score called the score of the lateral cast and the curvature of the upper lateral cartilage with the mucosa. With the mucosa down, down, see? And you can the valve intact, the upper lateral cartilage with full continuity with the dorsum septum, the valve is fully intact. Again, look at this side. The valve is fully intact, as you see. So just remove from this area, from there again. See one millimeter. Okay. This is this is the only portion going to be excised during the whole procedure, as you will see. It's really an incision, a procedure, more than excision, a procedure. Now let us look at the intermediate crust. So go and hold the middle. So don't do like this. If you go like this, you are wrongly looking at the lateral crust. We don't want to look at the lateral crust. We want to look at the middle crust. So hold like this. And see now I'm holding, looking medially at the junction between intermediate and lateral cross, and I'm going to divide this obliquely in this way from medial to lateral. So divide the intermediate cross. So I see with my finger I'm is there on the midline, dividing from medial to lateral the intermediate cross. From medial to lateral, as you see. Okay. Again, divide on this side the intermediate cross. And you mark him bend. It's okay. Anyway, give me another mark him bend. Divide him from medial, again to lateral. Full preservation of the rim cartilage and keep it in continuity. Full preservation of the rim cartilage, keep it in continuity with that cross. That cross, no margin incision, no exposure, and no, no, don't, don't steal or bore any part. Now, with you fully care, deliver the intermediate cross, this is intermediate cross. Deliver to one side. Clean, clean. So both intermediate cuts now are delivered to one side, as you see now, working nice and symmetrical and nice manner. So give me marking them. So this is the medial cura is there, and this is the intermediate cross which was lying, lying in more horizontal way. I'm getting now in a vertical way to augment the medial cura and give me more tip projection. 
So we make now a a bucket between the two meters cooler. Yeah, and then with our draft, we need a nice super draft. A nice long super draft because we need to augment the nasal labial angle with super draft. And we need a nice, a nice. Uh, Coramella extract. No, this is a nice Coramella extract. No sharp is this. So we get this Coramella extract now to go in between the two meters of Cora in order to get create a strong foundation in the midline to give us more tip projection and more tip elevation and narrowing. So you are creating a strong foundation in the midline of conjoined intermediate to medial core, supported by columnar strut. And next step is the tip graft. This conjoined intermediate to medial core contributes for more tip projection and more tip elevation. Once you shut down there, because just to prevent dog ear, which can happen sometime in this area. Now we'll clean and we'll go again with sharp scissors and make another bucket along the coda end of the two meter cora. And again, another end, bucket there, all the way down to the bone. And then we will have this nice long tip graph because I want to augment this nasal labial angle in order to get more rotation. It will go like this. It looks quite a bit long, if you just make it slightly shorter. Okay. See, it's augmenting. You see how it's augmenting this area? You can see it going in and augmenting this. Very important. Better than to use two pieces. Use one piece. Give you more support. So now we switch to the Cut the end of the middle of the cora in a nice way. Okay. And then. We have now a very strong structure, very strong foundation in the midline, which will achieve adequate tip rejection, elevation, and symmetry. So we push this uh, structure back to the midline. And you see now, at this stage, we achieve nice, or oh, actually nice, needs really be angled. Nice double break, nice super tip break, and the hum, hum has been become less and less obvious. If you look at this side view, you see the short columnella and the projected tip very obvious from this side, and the very obvious hum. Now the acute nasolabial angle there, the acute nasolabial angle now this angle become open. It's turned from acute and open angle, nice open angle, stretch columnella, nice tip projection less obvious hump as you see now. So the hump push down should be more than enough for this. When you look at this at the beginning, you think you are going to excite this hump. 
But after doing this step, you think the excision is not is unnecessary, and push down is more than enough. Push down and smaller graft on the nasal later on. Okay, now we haven't finished yet work on the tip because still is fullness there, as you see. We still have to do some work on the. If you now look at the letter cross, as you see, give me a mark in vain. He, we, left, we left a large piece of letter cross, as you see, to, to uh, support the air sidewall, but there is still fullness. It's a fullness there and fullness there. So in order to reduce this fullness, I will do Indonesia letter core technique to go to the point of maximum, maximum convexity which is there, point of maximum convexity is there. Put my finger and see where it is. That's it actually there. Mm -hmm. Another man. So that's it there. So with sharp scissors now, remove this small tag of cartilage. Sharp scissor now, I will do the dental core of the technique under the skin, as you see. Very thin, we should have very thin skin. Extremely try to preserve the skin. Very thin skin. And then break this convexity by turning the scissor 90 degree and incise. So we already have broken this convexity that overlapping now, overlapping very obvious of the cartilage, overlapped on each other. And this now has reduced the fullness, also which will help with the rotation of the tip. We we'll do the same on the other side. Point of maximum convexity, which I can See there. So, and again, with very thin skin, under the skin. I'm not saying this is a 90 degree divide. And again, you see it's, it's overlapping again, overlapping in each other again. The overlapped cartilage now, very obvious and to reduce the fullness and let us just go and just remove this sharp edge from here let me put the curve easier and do the sharp edge only from there okay mm -hmm. so now is it strictly done? We just prepare for the tank and growth technique and we get around the caudal septum and this side exposing the caudal septum from the other side as you see the caudal septum trying to expose the other side other the expose in order to get this caudal septum in between the two media the cora. It is the caudal septum. I want to push it between the two medial cores there. The tank and the groove technique give me two small steps. Again, I'll bring the bucket on the in between the two medial cores. It's for the cap, this is what is useful. See now I'm making in the clean thing. I'm in the bucket between the two middle cooler and that's enough. That's enough now for this. So what will happen now? The two middle cooler will go around the quarter septum. Give me such So we do the the septocolomel like such as now. So we start from this side, high up on the septum, you see holding the flap up and high up on the septum and we we'll go from one side to another and then we we'll go to the middle of the flap on this side 
halfway and then we go back to the septum and then we we'll go back to the middle cougar flap on this side when you come out in, out in, you know, to keep the knot bagged, to keep the knot bagged from out inside. So this will make your knot bagged. And with your finger, make sure that the caudal septum is going between the two medial cora. With the first suture, you see the nice profile we are getting. Doing this. Just one more suture for security. Slightly lower, lower level. Come in out here. Come in out. Again, through the septum and the flap. And again, from out in on the middle of the flap in order to keep the your suture bright. So in this way, the two middle cura went, has gone around the caudal septum. Okay. Short. So the two meter core went around the caudal septum. And before we do the spanning such that I cast approximating such in order to get more tip refinement and definition, we need to access to this to the nasal and to put our graft and also we need to do the osteotomy and do the bush down technique before i do that i just remove the boreostium from the nasal as a preparation so moving the boreostium from the nasal i need small you have small touch yeah. okay. huh? yes give me your tongue so we'll do mark and bend. We'll do mid-lateral, double mid-lateral. And we'll do the lateral osteotomy. We'll do double mid-lateral in order to weaken this area to allow space for the hump to go down. If you don't do that, the hump will have resistance. So the ball will not go down. So you need to weaken this wall by doing double osteotomy, number one, number two. You see, number obvious there. Number one, number two, with two millimeter in between, in order to weaken this wall and, and make it weak and allow space for the hump to go down. And of course, do your lateral osteotomy. And is that special? Okay, osteotomy now. So we start double osteotomy, one high up first, one gently as pressing on the egg. Then go two millimeter below, and then do that out of You see, just knocking like knocking on the egg, exactly. So keeping the inside membrane. So the high mid lateral first, and then the low mid lateral. Two millimeter below. Then the lateral osteotomy. That's it done. See now full mobilization is that going right, left, left, right. And with your finger, suppressing so down.
So you see now, if you look over my shoulder, you see now, the hand has gone, it went down. Now you see, it went, it went down. Just removing some of this excess tissue from there uh, to avoid both of edema. If you leave this tissue, it will swell after surgery and give you more edema. So remove any excess of tissue, redundant tissue. To avoid and this is the most of edema of which again. Okay, so now we have put the hand down, hand pushed down, but you see, nice step of projection. Patient has got deep nasolabial angle, so we need to augment this angle. If you don't augment this angle, the patient will keep the hump shape or the curvature of the dorsum after surgery, which she might get annoyed. Give me dry goes. So we have the fascia lata, we use the right fascia lata, and we get just small piece. You get a small piece of the right fascia lata. I want just only small piece. Okay, and this this will go there with some cartilage now. You see how I'm going to do it. Give me marking pen. Let me see. Give me the uh, marking pen. Dry goes. Dry goes marking pen. So it will go in this area. We go to this area there. Okay. The glue, the glue. We get some tissue glue and put it on the fascia. Okay. Take it away from the glue now. Get this cartilage and put it on top of it and fix it. fix for a few seconds so the fascia the fascia used as a, a bed a bed for the cartilage another forceps so now already the cartilage is fixed on the fascia it's become one piece and then we get now a marking bin we're going to hatch hatch cross hatch this in order to take it get it to take the same shape as the nason. So you cross hash it with the knife. Now it's not going to move because already stabilized on the fascia. And become like small tiles on the floor, small tiles. So you can actually bend, bend easily now. As you see now, as can be bent easily bend easily all the way through and it can be bent easily so it will take the shape so you put it this way so it will take the shape of the nason when you put it this way there 
it will take the shape of the nasal. You just trim it slightly from the side, chisel, because you want to be, you don't want it to be big. If it is big, it's going to, to show, uh, okay, it's going to show after surgery. So try, yes, very important that you get the right, right give me non tooth forceps, the right size, non tooth forceps. So you see now, because of the a coarse hashing I have done, as you see, so it's going to bend there, bend nicely and take the shape, the shape of the, of the nasal. Let us see what will happen after I push it in. Remember, I made very exact pocket in order to That's it. See, that's it now. Look now. That's it in the place now. I'm just pushing it with my hand. So it will take the shape of the dorsal. Coming very nicely. Coming very nicely there. You see now? It's coming very nicely. And taking the curvature. Taking the cur curvature. Taking the curvature of the dorsum very nicely, curvature of the dorsum like this. Because I cross hatch, you see now with my finger, it's coming very nicely and it's augmenting this area. I'm giving more straight appearance to the dorsum. Now give me needle just to fix it now during the until I finish. As you there is no demarcation because I use the right side, just fix it now for a few minutes. Okay. By doing this one. Now we are going to do the letter cura approximating suture in order to get more more of the tip more of the tip definition and narrowing you see we, pres we preserve that our cross we go through the superior septal angle now from one side to another and then we go to the letter cross Where well, we did a Tawagataku of a great technique. We go to the lower portion, make small bite there. You see the effect of the suture there, making this, reducing the fullness. And again, it's through the superior septal angle. And again, through the lab again on this side. The cross flap. So I just approximate it so I don't squeeze too much. I don't want to squeeze too much. What's the problem?
Sőt, abok sem értünk, ezért a klassz, hogy a szúrja, 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 a Look how much narrowing and definement we achieved. And from the side of you, look at this nice, straight, almost natural looking dorsum. This is the push down technique. And look now at the before, how wide it was the tip, large nostrils, the wide round tip, as you see, and the uh, hump and the projected tip, short column acute nasal angle angle. All been done in, in less than 36 minutes. It's very nice again, very nice profile. Very nice profile. So we have done full septal hyaloblasty, obtaining septal graft, then oblique dome division, columnar strat, tip graft, tank in the groove technique, bilateral, lateral cross overlay technique, spanning suture, nasal nasal, uh, nasal augmentation, augmentation of nasal, nasal, nasal frontal angle, bilateral osteotomies. All done in, in less than uh, 36 minutes. Uh, okay. One more procedure I forgot to do actually is to divide the nasolabial muscle because patient got attention knows. So whenever she loves or talk or speak or eat, the nose drops down significantly. So I'm just elevating the exposure in the nasal spine as you see. Exposing the nasal spine there, the nasal spine, and elevating the boreostium from both sides. You see now the bones, you can see the bone clearly. You can see the bone, and you can, you can hear me scratching on the bone all the way up here, all the way up here, and then removing the muscle from the nasal spine, as you see now, and around the nasal spine section, section. You see now. The nasal spine, I'm removing the muscle from around, around the nasal spine. So the muscle is scratched from the nasal spine and lift up slightly, lift up slightly. And then we get the suture. This suture is very important to keep the, uh, the nasal suture, be careful, to keep the nasal structure away from the bone. So it will reduce the possibility of the muscle to reheal again or insert on the bone again. So there will be a space between, as you see now what's happening, look, it's going up. So there's a space between the nether structure and the bone. It's going to be filled with, it's going to be filled with uh, connective tissue and therefore prevent the function of the muscle, of the tension function of the muscle on the tip, tip by bringing the tip down. So it's a full septorhinoblasty with the pressure, with division of the depressor septine muscle. So we achieve all our goals and you see extremely nice profile. Look at this very nice, natural looking profile. Extremely nice profile. And compared with this profile before, what piece of original patient photograph. Compared with this profile, look at the very wide tip, very wide a like base. And look now at the, at the a like base. You see how much tip narrowing, definition, refinement we achieve. It's a metric of the nostril, very strong air like sideward. Look at the tip from above, very nice tip, narrowing, definition, refinement, very straight dorsum. The augmentation with the, the art of the augmentation with the nasal graft and how we do it in a way that it will mold with the, with the shape of the bone, as you see from the profile, very nice, extremely natural, natural looking nose. Thank you for watching. This is Basha Bizra from the Rhinoblasty Bizra Academy uh, in uh, Dubai and London. Thank you.